Once Halo Infinite events are gone, are they gone for good? Campaign DLC, possibly the Flood Return, and has going free to play been a good thing for Halo Infinite? Well, I answer that and a lot more from you guys, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again, giving you another discussion video about Halo. So I recently went to my community page asking you guys if you had any questions about Halo Infinite as a lot of things have come around the corner and like a lot of things have changed with Halo Infinite since the release and you know, my job is to basically be the news guy basically of Halo Infinite. So we now were able to catch everything and also just kind of discuss Halo in general. And in this video I answered a bunch of your questions. You guys certainly replied back so thank you so much for your support and interactions with this channel guys. If you want to catch the next Q&A, make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch those channel posts when they do go live, but let's get right into the content here. Liam Oretz asks, Do you think that special events like Tenrai and Winter Contingency will be revisited at later dates, or will their content be lost to the past from limited events? And so, I kind of feel like that's pretty much what's going to be happening with these events. That's kind of the idea of events just in general, right? Is that they're kind of meant to be like a limited time thing to kind of get you back into the game to kind of play on your... FOMO basically to kind of boost up those player numbers and get some new content and stuff like that. So, I mean, we've seen Tenrai returning occasionally. Like, well, I think there's four rotations of Tenrai. I have a feeling we most see that as like the fracture event where we'll have like some cool, crazy new armor set to kind of play around with like the uh, lore, I guess, or just artistic styles of Halo. Because there's certainly a lot of things that 3 for 3 can do to have some really unique armor sets that, but you know, they might not fit the, uh, the aesthetic of the game. So I think we'll have like these fracture events come back around more often. These probably be like our larger beat events. And then have the smaller ones like Winter Contingency. We're gonna have the Cyber Showdown come around as well. Tactical Ops is gonna be another one to kind of come around, but kind of just be like these like one-time events. They kind of just like more lighter kind of things with lighter battle passes and things like that. In Winter Contingency, have a, a ten-tier pass. Uh, I assume that with the Cyber Showdowns coming around, we'll probably have a 10 tier as well. Last about two weeks, and you know, just kind of get a nice little boost of player base. It kind of always gets you something to do. But that's kind of the idea of like live service multiplayer games like Halo Infinite is right now. That it's kind of just always pumping out new content, and some of it you might not be able to get back, but some of it you might be able to. I know as a community, Halo's kind of grown with Halo being kind of a bit of a collection game in a way when it comes to unlocking all your armors and stuff like that and be able to have everything. Halo if it's not designed for you to have all the armor sets out there, it's for you just to kind of pick and choose what you like. So short answer, yes, they're going to be gone forever, but long term, there's always going to be something. Tanner asks, is Firefight coming? I know a lot of stuff needs fixing or added, but Firefight is a cool experience. I mean, I certainly agree with you that on that as well, that yeah, Firefight is a really fun experience. Uh, I mean, it's like a really fun kind of chill mode, kind of shoot up your AI characters, stuff like that. I would like to see some kind of replayable like PVE content come to Halo Infinite. Uh, I wouldn't expect to see it sometime this year, unless 343 has just like the biggest plans for PVE and more modes and stuff like that. But I think from what we started out with, a lot of people are probably going to be asking for more like that standard kind of experience when it comes to Halo's multiplayer experiences. Uh, I think what well, it took about uh, six or seven months for Firefight to get into Halo 5, and when they did, it was kind of just like a. Eh, it was kind of like Firefight, but it didn't really feel like that. It was kind of shoehorned in. I've seen a lot of discussion online about the play areas that you had in the campaign, right, right before you fight. Jacob Redemni, you know, the kind of these play spaces are kind of mocked up to be like UNSC battle areas and stuff like that, which felt very much like a firefight map, which is very true. But I think for a firefight map, I don't think it's really that interesting. I think it's fun for like an interesting like engagement for a campaign, but for like a replayable map, I wouldn't really see it that interesting because it is rather flat. The elevation really isn't there. Um, besides like a few buildings and things like that, but for the most part, it's more kind of like a shooting gallery for the campaign side, I think, to kind of defend waves. Plus the lines of sight are just like completely across the map, right? So if you come across any stalker snipers, well, they're going to get you pretty easily. But do I expect to see a firefight come into the game? I mean, maybe. I do feel like there is a need for a replayable PvE element of Halo Infinite, but does that call for Firefight? I don't know. I mean, the last game to truly have Firefight was, what, Halo Reach? But everyone just keeps going back to ODST saying that was the best one. 
And personally, like, Firefight is alright. It's kind of fun when, like, I want to play Halo, but don't actually want to try. And I'll just kind of want to blow stuff up. Then, like, Firefight's fine. But, like, honestly, I don't really find the mode that interesting to play. In its traditional sense, if 343 does something a little extra to the mode, like maybe some base building mechanics or something like that, like, kind of do a more wave defense kind of stuff, I can see that being a little bit more fun. But honestly, like, Firefight, I'm kind of just, like, over it. I mean, we've played it for so long, especially on the MCC as well. Uh, I just kind of like to have some new experiences or some kind of interesting take on it that would expand on what Firefight has to offer. Captain E2000 asks, when do you think we could expect some campaign DLC? Which has definitely been the question I've seen a lot of people within the community asking about. It's campaign DLC, when are we going to get it? Are we going to get it? And things like that. Well, we're definitely going to get some expansions to the campaign. I believe the way the campaign is set up right now, it's made it way easier to kind of expand on the world of Zeta Halo, right? Like just add a new island, obviously really more complicated than just adding a new island to make that happen. But that's kind of how they set up this world to be. And I'm sure many of you know this. I covered this on the channel as soon as it dropped, guys. But, you know, if you don't know that Microsoft has trademarked Halo the Endless. Now, the interesting thing about trademarks, which is something I saw online about, so don't take me at my word on this one, but I did do a little research and it seemed to confirm it as well that trademarks need to be utilized within six months of putting in that trademark unless you lose it. And this trademark was filed on December 7th of 2001. So could we see campaign DLC in six months after release? I mean, that would be pretty freaking awesome, though. I think there might be some kind of workarounds. You can extend trademarks, which I believe you have to pay a penalty for that, which, I mean, Microsoft, how much money, billions they bring in might not be that crazy of an extension. They probably do it all the time. That would be pretty insane to see some extended content coming like six months after the release, which would be amazing. Don't get me wrong. I would absolutely love it. I just find it kind of unlikely that we get campaign DLC six months after release, especially since season two starts in May, which would kind of actually be about six months after release, but hope maybe season two would get some campaign DLC. Then maybe that's another reason why they extended it beyond just adding in co-op. Um, Cause then we have season three, probably starting around like August, September timeframe. What could this DLC look like though? Well, we do have some hints from one of the campaign trailers, which I brought up previously. Because we do have this scene right here from the campaign gameplay trailer of 2020. This was right before they delayed the game. There is a scene right here with Master Chief looking at something that has like three orangey red dots on this. This actually was shown basically in the concept art as well. This little concept art right here is shown multiple times within the art book as well. You can see the very familiar three red dots and this would possibly be like some cut content we could see be brought in later as DLC. This is definitely a solid plot point that 303 wanted to play off of because he had this image right here. Then you had this image right here, very similar, right? Obviously different art styles, but like very similar idea. Here's another one of like a giant forerunner structure with an eye looking at Master Chief. And here is another one as well, giant forerunner structure with an eye looking at Master Chief. So this was a plot point. I think that 343 really wanted to play and make something happen of, but this didn't actually make it into the game for the final cut, or maybe just like the connecting parts to that story didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So we could see this campaign DLC that was cut, maybe brought into the game, because they definitely like modeled it out. They definitely wrote out storyline. They probably even acted and played out the gameplay of it. It probably just needed some more time for polish, or maybe the surrounding things around it that could probably make into its own expansion as well. Again, again, a lot of speculation here, but I just feel like there's something there. We just don't know what it is. Jack Colson asks about if I would like to see the Flood return as campaign DLC, and also maybe having more linear experiences as well beyond just having like the open world stuff so we can have more like set pieces and things like that, which certainly would be a cool thing to have happen within Halo Infinite. Don't get me wrong. I think that'd be sweet. I feel like there certainly were sections within the campaign that felt like set pieces, like the road mission, especially with towards the end, definitely felt like a set piece within the world of Zeta Halo. I think there's a way you can make like these big grand set pieces happen within the world of Zeta Halo while you're playing the campaign. And you mentioned about, you know, scarab fights and things like that, which I think having it in an open world, a setting where you can pretty much move around, do it however you want. I think that would be a really cool thing to do because we've beaten scarabs in a linear experience multiple times over in traditional Halo games. Doing it in an open world style could open itself up to a lot of unique styles of taking it down, which was one of the great aspects of the scarab fight within Halo 3. And we do know that the Banished have access to scarabs. They have very unique ones as well. Like that would require a totally new set of skills to take one out. So 
And I think we could see it eventually. And when it comes to the flood, like, yeah, the flood's gonna return, man. It's just a matter of time. I think that's the reason why we don't have infection. They might try to tie it into some event. I do expect to see like the first campaign DLC or maybe the second one involving the Flood as well. I don't see it going much more than like two years without the Flood within Halo Infinite. Since the Flood were referenced within the campaign, lore wise it makes sense because there are containment facilities within Zeta Halo as well. Have a breach or whatever space magic happens, there you go. Though when you bring the Flood back, you want to make sure that it's not too convoluted with like enemy different types of stuff like that because now we're really setting up the Endless, right, as like the big baddies, right, in the game. like. They fear the Endless more than the Flood. Though the Endless have this weird thing where it sounds like they might not be able to be infected by the Flood since they are unaffected by the rings which destroy nervous systems. The Flood need nervous systems to kind of latch onto the body and kind of take over it, right? So could the Endless weaponize the Flood? I mean, this is all hypothetical, but it kind of would make sense. I don't know though, because a galaxy taken over by the Flood might not be like the best aesthetic, and I wouldn't want to live in that kind of galaxy if I was the Endless, but you never know. Maybe they're like big pussy, gushy grossness all over the galaxy. Maybe that's like their, you know, art style that they like or something. As Demmer asks, why Halo Infinite campaign don't have blood and overall vehicle destruction is underwhelming, cut corners or what? Uh, I mean, that certainly could be the case when it comes to vehicle destruction. It's like, it might be a little more re resource intensive. That's the reason why it might not be so crazy. Uh, it's because, you know, they obviously have to make the game look good on the Xbox One and also on the Series X, but you don't want those Xbox One users to feel like they're missing out on a lot of content. But I'm pretty sure if, like, well, how the game runs on my PC, it definitely is demanding enough. I certainly would like to see, like, the vehicles experience more damage when they blow up in a way. Like, I think, like, the dynamic elements of it, like, Tires being blown off, uh, paint being chipped off, and things like that from the ghost, which is really cool. Uh, but I like, would like to see, like, yeah, like we see, like in Halo 2, right? Where, like, the ghost, when it blows up, it kind of flutters around, flies off, and explodes, or something like that. Like, that's just way more dramatic and fun, right? And just kind of having an explosion and the vehicle still relatively maintaining intact. This certainly could be something that we see maybe, like, dropped with, like, a campaign DLC. Like, oh, we've improved, like, the destruction of vehicles, or something like that. Like, things like that are eligible to be changed within the Slip Space engine. So, Sleep 4 3 has definitely set themselves up properly. Do I expect to see it change anytime soon? No, but it would be nice if we did. Now, when it comes to like blood overall, I didn't really miss it. I never really felt that Halo was like a bloody game. Maybe a little bit in CE, but that's because like the graphics were like so low back then that you kind of had to have like this huge splash to kind of give you that effect and that feedback that you are shooting somebody, right? But it's definitely been toned down in Halo 2, it was toned down in Halo 3. Like Halo 3, you just have like a little eh. I never really noticed the blood on the ground and I think it's kind of got supplemented a lot when it comes to like shield flare explosions. So you still get like that, that feedback of shooting an enemy and seeing that shield flare go off. Or with grunts, right, when you shoot like the gas tank, like you see like this big green explosion kind of happen from them and they go flying off in a different direction. Like I still feel like we get that satisfaction of the uh, seeing like an explosion or something coming off of the character kind of get that visual feedback of like a explosion like blood would be, but just kind of in a different way. Now, honestly, when I was playing the campaign, I didn't really notice the lack of blood until I was like, well, actually, there is like no blood in this game, is there? And I was like, oh, oh well, I'll keep having playing because I'm having a lot of fun. And I feel like the lack of blood in Halo Infinite is one of those things where it's like, people don't notice it while they're playing, but when somebody mentions it, then they don't like it. Rather than while they're playing like, oh man, there's no blood, ugh. And we have Michael, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that name because I don't know how to pronounce that at all. I've never seen it before. But you ask, how do you feel about Halo Infinite being free to play now that we have had it for over a month and seen it in full force? And continues on talking about like the customization, how drip feed content, and also how like the customization right now is like not exactly how it is like in reach and things like that. Uh, for free to play, I think it was the right move for Halo. Now. We do know that like that brings microtransactions in the store, which the store certainly does need a lot of love. What they're offering and what they're asking is just not valued properly. I think $10 for a battle pass, totally worth it. The store items though, like you need to either offer more content within those bundles to make it feel like they're worth something or cut the prices like in half. I bought into the battle pass and I did buy one microtransaction, like that Eagle attachment to the assault rifle. But that's only because like I was gifted on stream to purchase it. So 
Um, beyond that, I haven't really bought any kind of microtransactions because I've always kind of felt they're a little too overpriced or not that interesting. But I feel like going free to play overall is the right move for Halo for one reason. It's because we're kind of on the coming from the ground up kind of thing. We're rebuilding the community for Halo as it's been pretty much dormant since Halo Reach. So 3 for 3 really needs to lower that bar of entry to get people into Halo to play it. The best way to do it is to go free to play. And pretty much we've seen a lot of games go free to play with microtransactions and the only reason why you would see them do it be probably because it brings them more in more money and it continues source of revenue beyond just paying 60 bucks for the game. Especially since the prices of games have not gone up at all in like over like two decades. So we'll take a look at this inflation calculator. You can't see what I'm talking about. Like in, two, in the year 2000, $60 now would cost $97 and they're pretty sure the game companies would probably bump up that cost a little bit more to be probably like a hundred bucks per game, which would be a huge barrier of entry, especially since people are getting paid less and having to work more. There are a lot of great games out there. So getting someone to pay a hundred bucks just to try out a game is a big ask. So the best way around that is to go free to play with microtransactions so people pay when they want to, but they just get the chance to play the game. Now for Halo, I would pay a hundred bucks for to not deal with microtransactions at all and just get like a traditional unlock system, but that's just not how the real world works. And right now the store does kind of suck. It does, like it's, everything costs too much. Well, 343 sees this, but it depends on how 343 and Microsoft view success when it comes to the store. If you've bought one thing, then they, if they review that as success, then the store ha has actually been rather successful. But if they view per player buying like two or three, maybe even five items, then the store has been, I'd say, probably unsuccessful. It just kind of depends on the metrics that 343 and Microsoft want to use for when it comes to success on that end of things. Long story short, yes, free to play was a good move. So if you're new to the channel, missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I'm gonna link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching, greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.